Elephants are some of the most magnificent and fascinating creatures on Earth. With their iconic tusks, long trunks, and impressive size, it's hard not to be in awe of these gentle giants. But have you ever wondered how elephants came to be the way they are today? The story of elephant evolution is a long and complex one, spanning millions of years and involving many fascinating species that have since gone extinct. In this video, we'll take a journey through time to explore the evolution of elephants, from their earliest ancestors to the modern-day species we know and love. The term elephant has a mixed etymology, stemming from both Greek and Latin languages. This is particularly true for the scientific name of elephant's genus, which is Elephos. In Greek, Elephos referred to an antlered beast or stag. In Latin, the word elephant can be broken down into two parts, L, meaning arch, and fant, meaning huge. As for the African elephant's genus name, it is Luxodonta, which describes the shape of their teeth as being lozenge-shaped, suitable for grinding food. Mammals originated around 180 million years ago from a reptilian lineage, around the same time as dinosaurs. The genetic lineage of elephants split from primates approximately 80 million years ago, with the tree shrew being our closest known common ancestor. It is believed that Molyritheriums, which were about the size of pigs, were the earliest ancestors of proboscideans around 50 to 60 million years ago. Both morphological and biochemical evidence suggest that manatees, dugongs, and hyraxes are the closest living relatives of present-day elephants, which is remarkable considering the significant differences in their size, appearance, and habitat. The order under which elephants are classified is the proboscidea. This means animals with trunks slash proboscis. Over the course of evolutionary history, it has been estimated that there have been about 352 species of proboscideans. The creatures of this order have inhabited every continent except Australia and Antarctica. All but two, the African and Asian elephants, have died out. It has been hypothesized that proboscideans were able to exist in so many environments because they were capable of specializing to particular habitats. This enabled them to disperse across the continents. However, this very advantage became a disadvantage in the face of radical changes in their habitats. Because of their specialization, they were unable to adapt to change in order to survive. Their large size proved to be a hindrance to their adaptive abilities. The trend in the evolution of proboscidea has generally been longer limb bones and larger skulls and teeth. As proboscideans have grown taller, their trunks have grown longer. Because their heads are far from the ground, nature has compensated for this height by developing the trunk as a necessary tool. For such large animals, the trunk has provided a fast and convenient way of reaching food and water on the ground. This has meant that they do not have to bend down to drink or feed, which would put them in a vulnerable position. A long trunk has enabled proboscideans to investigate the ground for food and water while still watching and listening for approaching danger. As a result, nature has selected in favor of longer trunks. This is one of the elephant's most interesting and unique physical features. The family Elephantidae developed from the order Proboscidea. The Asian elephant, both species of African elephant and the mammoth sit within this family. Previous to these species however were other closely related ancestors. Trilophodon. This species lived about 26 million years ago, characterized by having four tusks. Two tusks curved upward out of the upper jaw and two tusks curved downward out of the lower jaw. Deinotherium. This creature had two downward curving tusks that were probably used in a shovel-like manner to scoop vegetation out of the watery swamps where it lived. It existed approximately 25 million years ago. They had no tusks in their upper jaw, making them somewhat unusual. Platybelodon. This creature also had two lower flattened tusks, again probably used for digging and scooping vegetation. Mastodons. More correctly classified as part of the family Mammutidae, the remains of the first Mammutidae, descended from the Paleomastodon, were found in the 25 million year old Oligocene strata in Africa and Eurasia. These animals were about the size of today's elephants, but more solidly built with a hairy body. Around the same time as the emergence of the mammoth, the Asian elephant, Elephas, also came into being. This species, which originated in Africa, is thought to have a stronger evolutionary connection with mammoths than with African elephants. Today, 
Asian elephants can be found throughout Eurasia, including in India, Sri Lanka, China, Bangladesh, and Southeast Asia. The Indian subspecies of Elephas maximus is known as Elephas maximus indicus, while the subspecies of Sumatra is Elephas maximus sumatranus. On the island of Sri Lanka, there is a distinct subspecies called Elephas maximus maximus, which has evolved differently due to the isolation provided by the island. Most male elephants on the island are tuskless, although they are not a separate species. This is likely the result of a selection process in which ivory hunters over many centuries shot bulls with particularly large tusks, leading to fewer offspring with large tusks. This is a sobering yet intriguing example of how human actions can influence the evolution of other species. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe. Don't forget to wash your teeth before you go to bed. Have a good day.